Hello. Let's talk about this. I'm just sharing it. Just sharing it. It was so funny today. Somebody in one of my paid groups in Becoming University was like, it's so cool. All you do is put on a sweater and show up and talk and it's awesome. And I was just dying because I thought, oh gosh, I didn't know I had a sweater thing. If I have a sweater thing, I'll get more sweaters. <laughs> Cause I'm going to run out of sweaters in like three more videos. Um, so you'll just have to see sweaters on repeat unless let's make this sweater thing and thing. And then I'm going all in, I'm going all in. So we'll have to see, we'll have to see. But I want to talk about this topic because I think it's really big. So many of us um, really excel in crisis. Um, and this is something actually I see in, in veterans as well. Um, uh, let me just share it. Crisis. Uh, da, da, da. So think about like for you, crisis. And by crisis, I mean like it can be an actual emergency or it could be like something going on in your family or something going on with friends or it's like crisis time and you sort of jump into action and you know what to do. Um, okay, let me just share it and be done. Okay, let me check my sound actually to make sure because how funny would that be? Okay, it's working. <laughs> I've done that before. I've made like an hour long video that had no sound. Not fun, not fun. So let's talk about this topic of oh, crisis. crisis, crisis, crisis. So here's what I see. And, and I see this from experience because I've been exploring this in myself. I turn on in crisis and I am like focused, focused, <laughs> focused. And they don't phase me. Crisis don't, crises don't phase me. It's like a sweet spot for me. It's my comfort zone. So I thought, what's the difference between a crisis and everyday life? Because so many of us, when we're in a state of crisis, feels great and we know what to do we know how to take action we take full charge of the situation we get everybody through it like it is just a zone of brilliance for us and if that's you you may not feel great normally you might feel like you're a little bit all over the map normally um and again I, like i said i see this in 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 some veterans who have been in crisis situations, know exactly how to handle everything and take care of everything and keep going and take care of everybody and teamwork and teamwork. And then they come back and they're like, what? You know, come back in a normal civilian life and really don't know how to navigate themselves or feel impactful or feel purposeful. Um, and so all the topics I talk about are related to feeling like you're living your purpose and feeling like your life has meaning. That's what I focus on. It's helping you find meaning in life and identify that meaning for yourself and embody it so you really feel like you're living your purpose um, and help with purpose stuff too, of course. So, you know, we see, like we see people come back into civilian life and feel a bit all over. And now some of that may have to do with trauma, but a lot of it has to do with, we know our crisis selves, but who is this thing, person, like what? And here's what I've noticed that when we have something that's dramatic, when we have something that's gone wrong, when we have something that I would call a drama tornado, whether that's a real crisis or just some drama that we've kicked up in our lives, like I have to pay this bill by this date or this person's mad at me or um, we've got a family issue over here, right? So whether it's a drama tornado or an actual crisis, I'm not judging one of, I'm not judging either one of those. And, and for this purpose, it doesn't matter um, on the scale of severity and realness. It doesn't matter. So regardless of, of what, what happens in those cases, whether it's a crisis or a drama tornado, is that we get super, super focused. We get super, super focused because we know exactly what to do and we know we have to get to the other side of it. So all of the aspects and elements of ourselves are engaged. Our problem solving, our awareness is focused, our um, sort of emotional intelligence is heightened. We're paying attention, we're connected, we're seeing what's going on. We understand the nuances of things. We're sensing things that are happening around us, whether that's um, in our heads or actually like we're in space with other people. So <clears throat> there's this real clarity, this real clarity and this real heightening of ourselves that happens when we're in a crisis or we're in a dramatic situation. And I'm just looking down at my notes here. Um, 
So I should not have notes at all. It just distracts me. <laughs> so we are, we, we, oh, I'm getting rid of them. Okay, done. No notes. There was only like one sentence anyway, but the time it takes me to look down and read it, I'm like, what am I talking about? So, so we get really focused. We get super, super focused and we get really clear. We get really clear on who we are. We get really clear on what our role is. We get really clear on where our impact is. We get really clear on what the potential, um, the potential future is, the possibilities that can come out of this action and moment and time. Crisis gives us clarity. It gives us direct action and it gives us focus. And the challenge is many of us thrive in crisis because we need those things in the rest of our lives. We need clarity. We need focus and we need that understanding of our own impact and the motivation to engage. So if you thrive in crisis, but you feel a little bit all over the place outside of crisis and outside of a dramatic situation, then chances are, chances are you're not fully invested in your joy as much as you're fully invested in responding to pain and responding to a situation. Because responding to pain, it's clear, right? I don't like this, I want that. So you're clear, you're clear on where you're going. I don't like this, I'm going to that. But when we're in a joy space, when we're in a space where we're not in crisis, then what's required is that we have a full investment in something, in a dream, in a mission, in a vision, right? In a hope for the world, in a volunteer project, in something that we're trying to create. And if crisis feels like a better space for you, like you got this, then it's most likely because you're not fully investing in a mission or a vision or a dream other times. So you need that level of passion, the same level of passion you would bring to quite literally solving a crisis. And by crisis, I mean like your house could be flooded, your house could be on fire, your children could be in harm's way. Like you would get to it. <laughs> you would know what you're doing and you would get to it and you would not think about it. You would just Make it happen and do what needed to happen. That is possible in the rest of your life. Perhaps not at the energetic sort of boof as we do in emergencies. I'm not necessarily talking about maybe your house flooding was a bad example because I'm not talking about like fight or flight response, I'm going to die because we can't maintain that for a long period of time, nor do we want to. But that sustained focus that you bring to something like helping a loved one navigate illness or... um going through like a, a dynamic process with a child or a loved one who might be struggling. That sort of long, longer process where you're still focused on exactly what you want the outcome to be allows you to be really engaged and really focused and bring all of your skills to the table. If that's not happening for you in other places, what we need to do is look at where am I not allowing myself to invest? To invest in something I want. And by invest, I mean like let ourselves dream. Do you know what your dream is? Do you have a dream? Do you have a mission or a vision? Do you have a clear focus of what you want to create in the world? And some of us have like little little goals. Little goals like, well, I want to buy a house or I want a new car or I want to go to school. But sometimes those little goals aren't actually enough to motivate us. Just like we're always in a little bit of pain, right? Like we're a little overweight, we're a little tired, we're a little unhappy with our relationships. But a little bit of pain isn't enough to really snap us into, into action, <laughs> right? It's not really enough to get us going, whereas a bigger dramatic crisis is enough to get us going. It's the same thing on the opposite side. It's the same thing on like the happy side. So crisis, non-crisis is the same thing on the non-steady state side that you can have a little bit of focus like oh yeah I kind of want that goal I, it would be nice if I could achieve that wouldn't it be great if I had that but that's not really enough it's not really enough to get you going it's not really enough to pull the energy that you hold all the energy that's within you in order to pour it into something and that feeling that we have after being in a crisis that we gave it everything we had, that we were fully engaged, that we were fully active, we were fully present for the people we were with. That feeling is beautiful. And you can have that in the steady state side, you can have it in a non-crisis side, but it requires you to self-define, to self-define what you're going for. 
because in a crisis it's defined for you, right? Something has happened and you want that to not be happening or you want to recover from that happening. So you didn't have to define what you wanted. Whereas in the steady state, you've got to define that in order to get the same level of energetic engagement. Follow me? Follow me? So that leads us to ask the question, okay, well, what do I want? What do I want on a big level? Not on, a, not on like a tangible level, like on a big level. What do I want to see in the world? What do I want to see for myself? What do I want to feel in my life? What do I want to experience? What do I hope is true for everyone? Big, big questions is what I help people with, right? I'm a, I'm a vision, a strategic visionary. And I help people get to the level of strategic vision, a soul level of strategic vision of why are you here? What are you trying to create? What is it that your soul wants to establish in the world? What makes you different than me? on a soul level, right? So here I am looking at my notes again, make sure I got everything. Um, <clears throat> so we get that level of clarity, that level of clarity. And then there may be tons of sort of hiccups along the way of why we don't let ourselves commit to that. Fine, we do that work too, right? Like that's, that's the daily day, day-to-day mindset stuff of living. That's the giving ourselves courage and confidence and permission and acceptance and approval and all of the self-love stuff. It's all the mindset stuff. Like it's all the getting rid of energetic blocks in the way or whatever the language is that you under you resonate with around why we don't actually live the things that we want to live the first part is to know what we want to live and many people that's very fuzzy and it's very unclear but it's not unclear in crisis so if you're somebody who's like yeah i get it i go but you don't have that get it go in your life it's probably because you haven't committed fully to a vision and when you do and that vision is something bigger than you it will call you into action and, and invite you to bring all of your skills and network to the table because the, the solution is going to be bigger than you too, right? It's going to be bigger than you. So you're going to have all of your facilities go, faculties going, and you're going to have all your network and you're going to have all of your experiences, right? They're all line up to reach that vision. Just like in a crisis, we can magically get to the other side of it because things happen. Things just work out. The people that show up, the opportunities show up, the connection shows up, the money shows up, like things happen to get us through crisis because we are laser focused on getting to the other side of it. And then in your life, you don't have any of that, (laughs) right? So if we don't have that, then we don't have the laser focus because the laser focus on the high end vision and mission, the high, high level vision and mission is what gets you to the other end. It's what gets you moving along the path and allows you, invites you, encourages you to open up, to allow for the people, the circumstances, the random occurrences, the, um, what's that word we use? Um, serendipitous occasions and occurrences, right? Like the money, it, it lets everything line up, but everything is just sort of floating around unless we say this way, guys, this way. So. I invite you to really, really think about this high, high level strategic mission in your life. What is it you want to see? What is it you want to create? What is it that going for it is going to challenge you to do things that are beyond what you ever dreamed for yourself? Like the grandma picking a car up off of a baby, right? No grandmother thinks they can pick a car up. Well, stereotypical, right? Nobody person thinks they can pick a car up. Stereotypical person, right? But people can do incredible feats when we're in crisis. You can do incredible feats not in crisis, but you have to have that level of desire. And that's what we're getting at. Like, what is the thing? And I don't mean thing as in like a job title or an accomplishment. I mean, what is the vision of the world? What is the way of being and feeling and connecting and understanding that's going to take you beyond your own limitations take you beyond yourself and carry you forward with that level of motivation and excitement and vision yeah hopefully you're following me looking at my notes again yeah it's very easy to focus when we're in pain and you got to be in a lot of pain right to focus because we live in pain all the time and by pain i mean emotional pain i mean physical pain too A lot of people are in physical pain and don't do anything about it. Drives me insane. (laughs) Drives as like somebody who works on body stuff. I'm like, why would you live with an issue for 20 years and not do anything about it? 
why wouldn't you see somebody like me who restructures the body or like another expert who does physical restructuring? Why? It's the same thing with emotion. emotional. We'll live unhappy with ourselves, lacking in confidence, unclear on what we want in the world, unclear on who we are. We'll do that for our entire lives. Why? Why? There are people who can help us with that, to get through that. Anyways, so you have to be in a lot of pain usually to take action and to focus. In crisis or not, you got to be in pain. And you got to really want the outcome. Obvious and easy to do in crisis. Big crisis, right? Easy to do in crisis. I don't want that, which means I do want this and we're getting through it. I was thinking about this the, uh, uh, the other day because right now I'm in a little transition period in my business and in myself. <laughs> and, you know, we're looking at making some changes in our, in our living environment, like all sorts of things are going on. And I was thinking about the last time I was in a pretty significant crisis because I said, where's that person? Who's that woman? Where did she go? I'm pretty sure I can do this. And I was thinking about a time in 2009, 2009 to early 2010, where my house was falling down, like legit falling down, had huge holes in the floor, foundation was off, the siding was off, my house was falling down. It was a disaster. One time, I think I had people over and we were sitting on the couch and in the next room, the ceiling just fell, <laughs> just fell to the ground. Like it was awful, it was awful. And at the same time, I was having a huge emotional crisis huge emotional crisis because I'd just been um, sexually assaulted. And on top of that, it was by a colleague, so I was having a pretty big crisis at work as well, right? I had to change jobs. I didn't have to change jobs. I chose to change jobs. I was having um, just a lot of uh, trouble being at work. I was having a lot of trouble focusing at work. So like not my biggest and best time in the world, right? Like pretty major crisis all around. Pretty major crisis all around. And I remember calling, you know those signs you see on the side of the road if you're in the U.S. and it says, we buy houses, like, we'll buy your house. I called those people. And I was like, somebody buy my house. Like, I need out. I got to have one aspect of my life that's easy right now. And my job, my personal life, and my home life, they're all a mess. Like, that's three out of three. I got nothing. It was a mess. It was a mess. So, I, I guess I had health, but, yes, I had some, some level of health. <laughs> Some level of health, but my body's been through quite a bit being assaulted. So, anyway, so I'm I'm sit, like I'm in a deep crisis, like a deep crisis on every level. And I called those people, and I just remember that none of them would offer me enough money to cover my mortgage, so I was stuck. I was just stuck. And I remember feeling that stuckness and sitting in that stuckness and being in that incredible amount of pain. And at the end of the day, there was one answer and one answer only, right? Fix it. Fix it. Nobody was going to come save me. Nobody was going to come buy my house for and pay off my mortgage and then give me money to burn. <laughs> Nobody was going to make my job situation better. Nobody was going to help me get through the emotional trauma that I was in. Like, I've, I mean, yes, I can bring in help, but nobody's going to be able to do it for me. We'll put it that way. I had to do it. I had to get through that crisis. And so you buckled down, focused, and got through it by a miracle. I'm, I'm in miracles right, left, and center. Like miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. Like literally there is no other explanation. It was miraculous how it all panned out. But I focused. I made a decision and I focused. And then it was like bam, 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 done. Free, moved to New Zealand, gone. <laughs> right? I mean, it wasn't that quick. It took a while. It took a while to sell my house, quit my job, then moved to New Zealand uh, six months later. So... What I'm saying is that level of energy and focus is possible and it's way easier to find when you're in incredible amounts of pain, right? Think back on an experience in your life that you've made some massive, massive shift probably because you didn't like where you were. But you don't have to wait for pain to do it. All it requires is that you have that same level of focus on the outcome that you want. It doesn't have to be because you don't like where you are. You could love where you are and still want something so badly that it will drive everything forward. It's a hunger, right? It's the hunger. And it's what you see in people who you might look up to who are like creative geniuses or, or sports stars or people who are just like, I have this vision. It's visionaries, right? And so if you're lacking in that pull and everything in life is just sort of like spinning around and like, well, okay, you know, nothing's really coming together. It's because we're lacking the vision that unifies 
all your action, all your efforts, all of the, everything in your life makes sense when you have a vision because it's all brought to bear on the vision and on achieving the vision. Things that make perfect sense in crisis, but we don't really, we sort of forget why that works when we're in our normal lives. So, what's your vision? What's your vision, what's your vision, what's your vision? What is the vision, what is the overriding vision that's gonna motivate you forward? That's gonna pull everything into perspective? That's gonna bring everything, that even things you can't even imagine, bring them to bear on achieving this vision? You don't have to worry about the how, right? You just have to make the decision about the vision and then go for it with everything you got. <laughs> and you can do that without the crisis. You've just got to choose a vision that propels you and impels you from the inside more, 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 more. Okay, I hope that helps. If you have any thoughts, have any questions, reflections, you want to share your story, please do. Please do. I love hearing your stories and I love your feedback from the videos. Um, somebody told me that they watched like three of my videos in a row and I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. Because I'm just talking to myself here. I don't know if you can hear it. And the point of sharing is to help you and to connect, to connect, to connect. That is, is my overriding heart here is to connect and be part of this journey with other people and to connect in the journey with other people. And of course, if you want to connect closer, there are ways to do that, but that's not even the point, right? The point is to connect and to be on this journey together and to help you get there and to help all of us. There's no there to get to, but you know, move along and feel better and better and better as we do. Um, so please do share. Share if something comes up for you. Share if you've got a story to share. Message me, post them below. I'd love to hear. Mwah.